we are microcosms of the macrocosm. Right. And what happens to me as an individual and you, Kathleen, and everybody who's listening happens to we as a global family, a global blended family. Thank God we are blending more and more. And change does not happen like just somebody waking up and say, oh, I think I'm going to want to be enlightened. Well, they might read a book, a person might read a book and say, that sounds like a good idea, but then you forget the book. So something usually has to happen, something catastrophic. And in my case, uh, which is the, the case for many people with addiction stories, is something bad has to happen. You crash and burn. You don't just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to change from being a she pirate, which I called myself because I was living in the Caribbean. Like, you know, Johnny Depp has nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, you know, this is going to lead to my death if I don't do something. That's why I see all the stuff that's happening in our world today as not being terrible. It's just natural. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone and that you are in control of your life. It doesn't matter where you came from or what your circumstances are. We've all experienced pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. The show is here to help you turn those dark moments around and create a whole new you. Despite your success, have you felt lonely, angry, frustrated, or even suicidal? Do you long to be supported, recognized, and respected for who you are, not just the wards and accolades on your walls? You don't want to be known, identified, or remembered in a way that feels fraudulent because you achieved things out of obligation and not passion. Do you find yourself sitting quietly at lunch, listening to what lights you up, only to feel shame, fear, frustration, and resentment? Your inner turmoil and limiting beliefs surface, making you feel not good enough and afraid of doing something different. You've read the books, attended the seminars, and practiced new concepts and principles yet you still find yourself in the same rut. The lies you tell yourself percolate a cycle of disappointment. You say you'll change, but your self-limiting beliefs keep running the show, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. As a certified coach, I empower you to become your authentic self. My Soul Journey program aligns with your, your true self and guides you to find your soul vision, helping you discover your purpose in life. I provide tools to step you into your true magnificence and remember who you are. If you're interested in learning more, contact me at bravetv at kathleenmflanagan.com. Check out awakeningspirit.com, an aromatherapy-based body care line offering alternative healing remedies using natural and organic ingredients. Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 40% discount. The products are guaranteed, and if something isn't working, we can reformulate it specifically for you. Visit grandmasnaturalremedies.net, a CBD company that includes essential oils in every blend and either a broad spectrum or an isolate. Every product is tested, and the lab results are available on the website. Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 20% discount. Each week, we start the show with sound of the tuning forks, bringing in love, happiness, and balance to set the tone for the show and bring out the best in both myself and my guests. Let's begin. Tessa Lord is author, author's a new eco novel and of four nonfiction books. She's featured on No BS Spiritual Book Club, 
public advocate for positive thought seeds, lifelong yoga and meditation practice, practitioner, adventurer, nature freak, originator of the loving nature community, spreading love energy is her thing, defining, defying the dark and negative is her aim, she aims with strong arrows. She's the co-host of Z Lord, a years long spiritual podcast. Check out her YouTube channel for many meditative mind stillers. She helps up others uplift after having freed themselves from negative bonds of self-destructive addiction. Life is a mystery and she's passionate and on fire about love, not politics being the solution to society's crippling insecurities. Consciousness revelation, in other words, is her bulge call, bugle call, mind, body, spirit alignment, check, helping others, check, join her brigade of love's light at tezalord.com. Her motto is love is the weapon of mass illumination. Welcome, Teza. Thank you, Kathleen, and welcome to everybody who is with us. <laughs> So Tezza, tell everybody a little bit about your journey of becoming an awakening spirit. Wow. Okay. Well, when I start telling my story, it sounds like I'm a thousand years old because I've had many different incarnations within this one lifetime. It's incredible. Um, and, and I was in a lot of pain as a kid because of my parental misguiding, <laughs> being misguided by my alcoholic home, which is a common story. There's addiction everywhere, whether it's from drugs or food or too much screen, addiction is everywhere. And wherever there is heavy addiction, there's not enough spirit. So I basically had to be a pioneer and discover for myself what felt true and nothing I was fed, not what my parents gave me, my school, my upbringing, my religion, the government, nothing felt true to me. So I was fortunate because I was born with this incredible, courageous, like rambunctiousness. And I just decided I was going to be an adventurer. So uh, at the age of just in my late 20s, I left the United States and I went to be an expat in the West Indies. And those were during the days when Everybody was saying, love it or leave it. So I decided, okay, I better leave it. <laughs> and that was the end of the Vietnam War, thank God. And I did a lot of pro-war um, you know, rallies and whatnot, but I just had to leave this country because I was very upset. And, and I really recommend to anybody who feels the same way, if you're very upset with what's happening with our country in the America, if you're listening from America, please go travel, go live somewhere else. Because I ended up living in a true dictatorship and a truly fascist situation. And believe me, America is a democracy and it will be a democracy for as long as there are Americans. <laughs> now it's evolving, and it's a changing just like the way my person did. So I um, had problems with addiction because naturally coming from a family where addiction was taught to me, I followed in their footsteps. And uh, I was 36 years old when the second part of my life began, when I committed myself to true sobriety, which is stepping from the shadows of fear into the light of love. And it all begins with learning to love your own self. And for anyone who's struggling with addiction, that is the issue. You have to learn to love yourself to substitute a, a bad addiction for a good addiction. So what did I do? I fell in love with spirit. And I also fell in love with dance and keeping healthy. And I've always been a yogi and a meditator. So I just dove into those uh, higher aspects of myself as I learned more about what self-love really implies. So the second half of my life began with um, coming back to the States where I crashed and burned in Manhattan of all places. What a great place to have a bottom. What a great place to have a high. <laughs> and after having lived for over a decade in the West Indian islands, and also at the end of my time in the West Indies, I went to live in the Middle East in Israel. So I understand very deeply a lot of issues that are facing our world today 
that people don't really understand unless they are right there living with the people who are going through all the angst of changing because what we're always doing is change 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 is the constant of my life and change is also the constant of all humans and the only really solid substance is the connection that we have with spirit whatever that means to a certain person whether it's a, you know a deep um, abiding trust in the religion that you have found comfort in or like myself it's the connection with all in creation the cosmic connection the cellular connection the consciousness connection so that's it in a nutshell <laughs> Okay. No, that's um just I'm lost sure that that's don't okay. be surprised. I guess we'll figure something else out. But um angle here. There that's yeah. better. Okay. You know, live TV, I'm telling you, every time we come on, you get spiritual light people together, things go on, so the lights go out. Okay, I got mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and I'm willing to speak to you, as I told you earlier. So whatever we can do to make it work, just spread the love. That's what we do. That's right. <laughs> So tell me a little bit more about what your experiences were, especially living over in the Middle East at this point, because, you know, we are, we are, our nation, we know is all going crazy and this is not a political talk at all. And I'm not going to lead it down that way, no. but just what your experience was there in what we see and observe in America. And then what you did to like come to terms with it because i know that we're very ignorant here in the united states on many levels but you're living there with the people so i think that would be a really interesting perspective to bring to the viewers yeah it's most immediate isn't it i mean it affects all of us especially with what's happening in our national politics and and colleges and young people um basically life is so complicated and the mystery of life is so profound that there is not one way of looking at anything. I'm sure you realize that our lives are like a, a, a diamond or a beautiful crystal where there's so many different facets, so many different connections, and some of them are fractured deep inside the crystal, and some of them are shiny and bright. I'm talking about a naturally formed crystal that hasn't been cut and polished. Uh, I love crystals. I learn a lot from crystals. Right. They are teachers. And if you look deep inside of a natural crystal that appears to be perfect, there's always fractures in there. There's fissures. There's lights that are reflecting. And then there are little escape hatches where the energy can be released. And so my time in Israel, uh, I was really looking forward to it when I was there because I was going to spend a year, as I do in many places I go to, to really investigate what are the people like, what is the art like, because I'm a writer and an artist and an activist for spirit. And I, I went with an open mind and an open heart and right away found out, oh my goodness gracious me, everybody here is very tense. Everybody lives on uh, eggshells, and that was at the eight in the eighties. So right at that particular time, there was not a war going on, but there's always a war going on since this uh, whole conflict began. And um, I write about it in my book called Hybrid Vigor, which is about the evolution of humanity from what we call Homo sapiens, those of us who think we are thinking animals into what I present will be homo spiritus, where we really imbibe the fact that we are spiritual beings inside of our bodies. And yes, we are animals. So while I was there in Israel, I had this, this occasion that was very, very revealing of the situation. I had a, a neighbor uh, who I call Rivka, and she was an older lady, like at the time she was a granny and I was a young lady. And um, the, the Orthodox Jewish people don't uh, do anything like manual labor on Shabbat. They have to have somebody who's like a non-Jew come and light their fires. You know about that? It's a, it's a sweet little custom. So I was over lighting her stove so she and I could have a cup of tea. And I asked her, I said, Rivka, I really want to understand what 
is this controversy all about between you uh, being a Jewish woman who lives in Israel and the Arabs in general? I wasn't saying specifically Palestinians. And immediately her face changed. She became this visceral like monster. And, it, and the minute before that, she had been a loving granny. And she, she just said, I, I, can't I can't explain it. It's in our genetic makeup that I was taught to hate them and they were taught to hate me. And I learned at that very minute that even though this was the sweetest woman in the world and she was not a street person, she was educated and she had a loving family, but she had, because it was a genetic and a, a cultural and a historic hatred, that went on for going back to the time of Abraham, which is the Old wow. Testament, the story of the conflict between these two types of people who are cousins, by the way, they, it goes back to the time of Abraham. And if you're, if you don't know the story, I can quickly tell you, but if Abraham was too old to have a kid with Sarah, who is his wife. So Sarah said, take, my Egyptian maid, whose name was Hagar, take her to bed. And he wedded her and as a second wife, which was allowed, and gave birth to Ishmael. And almost immediately, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth to Isaac. And so we have a, a little Arab baby born first. It was Egyptian and, and then a Hebrew baby. And right there and then Abraham should have said, now girls, Let's work it out, but he didn't. And he ended up kicking Hagar out because Sarah demanded it, because Sarah wanted her child who was born second to be the head of the Hebrew race. So there began the conflict. It began with women. And guess what? It's going to end or the healing will begin with women like you me, whoever is going to be a strong enough and enlightened enough woman, not just any old woman, but enlightened and understanding that the situation is not going to change overnight. It's not going to change because people demonstrate. It's not going to change because of governments doing this and that. It has to be education and love and the spreading of forgiveness. And that's what I learned when I lived in Israel. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> wow. That's pretty profound that mm -hmm. it's not necessarily what we did. It's just, if we knew how to stir the pot, we just stirred the pot and just blew it all up anyways, without with, having to do a whole lot of anything. With good intentions, we stirred the pot, but, but you know, when, when there is violence and, and bullying and all that on every side, it, it gets to be confusing and nobody wants to live with a bully or be a bully. And so there, it's a confusing situation. And my husband and I were talking about it this morning as we took our hike. <laughs> we're, we're camping right now. And I, I said, you know, people who spend their lives being diplomats and understanding all the nuances and all the different variations of this story are the ones who should be doing what they are doing, which is the talks. And all the demonstrations by people who don't really know what's going on, the best thing we can do is to offer our psychic support to the highest good. And what is the highest good? Well, I'm not God. Are you, Kathleen? No. <laughs> and I don't know what the highest good is. And the woman I was speaking to in the, in the kitchen obviously did not know either because she was so imbued with hatred that it was frightening to see how a sweet little granny could instantly change into um, a hating person because of her cultural upbringing. Now, I would like to think I'm a positive thinker, and I know you are, and I know your audience members are, that we can make a change within our life. And we can do that by uplifting our own consciousness, take care of our stuff, make sure that we are living a good life. And there and therefore it ripples out to everybody around us, including our children and our community and our tribe. And therefore the solution becomes an evolutionary one that will be uh, embraced by the next generation or even the next 
set of diplomats who are talking differently than they are now. But it certainly will not be solved with war, just like what's happening in the Ukraine. This, the, the, the amount of absurdity going on with these uh, conflicts right now is quite frightening. And to me, the only solution is to not be in fear, but to be in the all-encompassing uh, love of there is a reason for all of this to happen. And we don't know. There's no reason why I can say I know, because I'm not God. I'm not the, the creator of this, of this beautiful thing called existence. And maybe our, our creator, you know, I don't believe in like, you know, the guy in the sky. I believe in consciousness is the creation, you know, the, the sacredness of consciousness. Maybe we are supposed to go to the very brink of conflict because it seems like the divisiveness has not healed, but I do believe it is getting better because the more it comes out into the open, the more people can talk about, well, you feel differently than I do. Let's talk about in a sane way, not, not being contemptuous of each other, but respectful. Let's talk. And maybe I can learn something from you and you can learn something from me. I don't think well, that. And I look at, <clears throat> this is by design. Okay, we know this is by design. We have never been so black and white in our world. We've always had gray. We could always at one point were tolerant of other people's perspectives. I was raised that way of just because I may not understand you, that doesn't mean I have to hate you, right? Mm -hmm. And so as I'm and I remember when I was younger, I used to go up to like guys, I didn't understand men at all. So I would ask them questions. They're like, oh my God, Kef, where are you coming from? And it was because I didn't know. I mean, cause they, to me, they were like another being from another planet because they didn't think like women, right? And right. I was raised, I mean, I had one brother. So what did I know about how boys thought? Because I had a brother and we kind of morphed him to be more like feminine. Not that he's feminine by any stretch of the imagination, but he had to learn to like deal with six girls and my mother in the house, right? Ooh, what a household. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so he was, he couldn't like, explain anything to us girls mm -hmm. and you know so when i was younger i used to ask a lot of men things and then i got fascinated with other cultures because i lived in south florida so there were <laughs> other cultures that i could talk to and i live with you know women from cuba and sometimes there was the south where they had this deep accent and i would think they were something else because the way they talk i mean there was weird stuff that always went on my head but i never demonstrated it. I always talked to them and asked them and, and got clarity about, you know, mm -hmm. why you think, because the North thinks differently than the South. Okay. There's no doubt about that. I learned that. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that was the tolerance is I was fascinated by other cultures, you know, because I didn't understand other cultures. I was Americanized. Okay. I'm an American. That's what I know. Mm -hmm. That's what I grew up with. And then all of a sudden you come into adulthood and there's Egyptians and there's Cubans and there's Mexicans and Puerto Ricans and Indians, Eastern Indians. Then you got the UK people and then you got the Italians. I mean, it's like, oh my God. And they all had a different set of ideals and beliefs that they were raised with, which were not what mine were. But I felt that it was, it enhanced me because I got to learn or experience different foods because of them. I got to learn how they thought a little differently, which expanded my thinking. And that's how I took life on, but that's not what we're experiencing right now. We're so divided in a black and white situation. But part of that is, is because we're all making decisions. Do you want love in your life or do you want to constantly stay in duality? Duality's leaving, people. It's leaving. <laughs> But it's not leaving the way you think it is. We're merging into a single one consciousness is where we're going. And we're either all getting on the boat or you're not. I know I'm going on the boat. That's we how already I like are one. We, yeah. we already are one consciousness. And, and that's the fun part of dedicating your life to higher thought because 
the more you explore consciousness, the more you realize we are all one consciousness. We are all connected through consciousness, through breath, through just being in existence. But some people spend so much energy denying it or fighting it. And I, I truly believe a lot of it has to do with the fact that people are addicted to their screens. I mean, if we could just walk away from our screens and go for a walk in nature, take a forest bath, look at the sky, hear the birds, try to identify what is that I hear or feel the whisper of a spider's web just breaking up in the air. I mean, all these little tiny things that people have forgotten about because they are addicted to knowledge. They think it's knowledge, but what they're doing is overdosing with with information. And one brain, one human brain cannot hold every bit of information that's available in, you know, the entirety. So people are imploding or they they think they're stupid because they don't know what's happening over in Indochina or they haven't heard about, you know, the latest invention. And um, addiction is very much the cause right now of people's being misled into this divisiveness. And, and I, you know, if we had something where all of a sudden the internet was just taken away from us, that would be really horrible for airports, especially in businesses. But what it would do to our consciousness would be absolutely mind blowing. People would realize, oh, I have been using up so much of my attention for what somebody is telling me how life should be rather than me exploring it just with what I have before me. Maybe I'm not going to be able to hop on a plane if the internet is interrupted for a while and go to Paris or Japan or, or Istanbul, but I can experience nature, which is what we are. We are part of nature. So I, I think a big part of it is that people have forgotten that we are animals and that we are part of nature. And that is to me the highest form of 21st century spirituality if we really pay attention to the fact that we are stewards of the land and it's our responsibility to protect our environment and not to figure everything out. And, and the divisiveness, I think, is a lot of man-made stuff that's just crammed down our throats. Really well, and we live in a society, too, that we can have just about anything we want. It's not like when we, you and I were children where the holidays, you got like the special treats, you know. Now it's like whatever you want, you can have. And I think we've gotten very accustomed to that and not really paying attention and using our imagination because we didn't have the Internet when I was a kid. We went out and played and we mm. would go out first thing in the morning and come back at dark you know, came in for dinner and then went back out. I mean, we were always in our imagination. And that's why I feel like now these kids are just schlepped everywhere is the way I see it, because it wasn't go out and play because, no, you got a sexual predator living next door that you have to be concerned about all of a sudden, you know, things that there's a safety factor that we've seemed to have lost. But my, but like you said, and how I believe is safety comes from within, mm -hmm. you know, it comes from within. And I think when we go inside and remember who we are and do the internal work, again, as you were saying, when we start doing that internal work, we start seeing the bigger picture. We start seeing that we are connected and we are a one being, but we have to stop long enough to go inside and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just say we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break and we will continue this when we get back. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And we have Tezza Lord in the room with us today. So, Tezza, tell us a little bit more about when you started going inside and doing the recovery. Um, on yourself, you know, where you created that self-love. So do you want to just tell our listeners a little bit about what that journey looked like for you? Because you were in a different country anyways. So I'm sure it was a little bit different than what I would experience here in the United States. Well, my journey, I'm American. My journey started in America, but it's just, 
I wanted to see the international flavors like you did. And I live now presently in North Florida, where we have quite a few eclectic different, but you know, I'm now in Maine and New Hampshire for this, uh, for the summer. And there are so many immigrants here. It is a whole different ball game. And it's a very mixed bag. As you know, all of America is changing. So for me, I, I personally think that we are all microcosms of the big microcosm. We are microcosms of the macrocosm. Right. And what happens to me as an individual and you, Kathleen, and everybody who's listening happens to we as a global family, a global blended family. Thank God we are blending more and more. And change does not happen like just somebody waking up and say, oh, I think I'm going to want to be enlightened. Well, they might read a book, a person might read a book and say, that sounds like a good idea, but then you forget the book. So something usually has to happen, something catastrophic. And in my case, uh, which is the, the case for many people with addiction stories, is something bad has to happen. You crash and burn. You don't just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to change from being a she pirate, which I called myself because I was living in the Caribbean. Like, you know, Johnny Depp has nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, you know, this is going to lead to my death if I don't do something. That's why I see all the stuff that's happening in our world today as not being terrible. It's just natural that we are going toward the precipice of a huge transformation mm -hmm. because we have to have that intensity of, of not so much the fear factor, but crises and uh, fractured uh, systems. And if people do not have a belief in the fact that we are all one, we are one consciousness, people freak out. And so what is the solution? The solution is get on the bandwagon and realize that it's all within each one of us. Our consciousness is the key. It's hidden right inside of us. It's not in the conventions, it's not in the ballot box, it's not in the pew, it's not on a beach in Bali. <laughs> Each solution of our life's fulfillment and happiness and also our, our fellow man is right within us. It's our connection to our heart, our connection of love. And when you feel that love, you feel good, you feel warm, you feel like, okay, you're not bent out of shape about worries so that's the indicator like the happiest people that you see are the ones who are really spiritually evolved dalai lama makes that very clear you know people who have a great sense of humor even though there may be tragedies in their life and yes of course they either get mad or sad just like any human does but their emotions they come through us and we make an adjustment in our the way we're living and then we let them go we don't cling to the emotion of, of negative emotion we want to strive for the way we all were when we came out of our mother's womb like none of us came in here with like opinions and grudges and divisiveness we came in with this open hearted and our eyes wide open love we're just little love bundles and we can still maintain that as adults even though we've been through the fires of of our destiny our so-called destiny but i believe that even a destiny can be changed karma can be changed with awareness and so we strive for that degree of in the yoga world we call it bliss there's a there's a word for the sanskrit word satchitananda which is the ultimate of understanding that life is the light which is sat chid which is knowledge and ananda which is bliss so when you really imbibe those understandings either with a teacher or scriptural studies, or just to be in the company of people who have this belief rather than the doom and gloomers. Uh, we then elevate our consciousness bit by bit, day by day, and we can maintain that state of love, self-love and love for others. And that's why I'm, I've become a very strong proponent of coaches too, because a lot of times 
we don't know how to get to where we want to be a lot of times. You know, here's point A, if you know where point A is, but you want to go to point B, but sometimes we don't know what that roadmap is and we think it should be a straight shot, but it's really one of these kind of things, yeah. you know, the really bad squiggly line. Mm -hmm. And then when something comes up, instead of going back to a habitual behavior, because I've been really studying a lot of habits mm -hmm. that um, I have, as we all have, and not wanting to be that. And it's, it's a very conscious choice to make mm -hmm. uh, when you don't want to allow the old you, so to speak, that habitual nature of you to run mm -hmm. your life. It's a very conscious thing. And, and I was thinking about like last week, there was a lot of things that kind of blew up. I described it that a bomb went off in the universe and it popped down here on the earth because everything seemed to blow up and it was very heavy, dense energy. And I had to go through various things in business. This was all business related. Mm -hmm. And I just felt flattened, like there was this weight on me that I couldn't get off. And it was, who can I talk to? Because I felt like I was hungover and I hadn't even been drinking. You know what uh -huh. I mean? It was like the headaches and the, and the shaking on the inside and all sorts of things were happening that I was aware of. And when I talked to a friend of mine and she said, this is what's going on, which was heavy, dense energies. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, what is the most critical thing because she's like, you're a problem solver. That's what you're doing. You're a problem solver. They're not your problems, but you're the problem solver. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, what is the most important of all the things that just blew up? Only one was really important, but I had to take, I took care of that. And then it was like, okay, now let's go here and let's go here. And every time I got lighter and lighter. And I also saw thought forms that I think supported limiting beliefs that I didn't know were there, but just like, oh, well, I'll attach to this, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what was the most profound for me at that was uh, the way I just responded to it. I didn't react to it. I responded. And my business partner had commented. He said, I just want to let you know that I was very impressed because he was teaching, so he couldn't do anything. And he said, you just responded. I've never seen you respond like that. It's because mm -hmm. it's always been like a, a, a panic. It's a habit. It was a right. panic. My mother taught me to react yeah. to things like that. And then yeah. that tra traumatic side of myself would react. And I didn't. I just, okay, let's just breathe through it. What's important? And I kind of methodically worked my way through it, which was incredibly empowering and I ask for support because, you know, that's another thing that most people don't do is like, well, it's weakness. If I ask for support, it's like, no, it's empowering because you're giving somebody else an opportunity for you to show their value, you know? So it was like this whole thing of like, yes. like so much illumination happened in something like that. So we, I, I could have said this was a bad thing, but it was actually a beautiful thing. It's like, yeah. I'm sailing along, everything's good. And then God said, oh, let's see how well she really does do. We're going to give her a little tsunami on the ocean. And instead of reacting, I responded just to show that, yes, I'm evolving. Because sometimes that's all this is, life does is show us we are growing and moving into a new direction. Constantly. And I'm thinking of, of uh, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel as you're talking about your experience where you asked for help. And way up on the Sistine Chapel, those of you who know that beautiful mural on the ceiling, is God helping Adam. But if you get into the close-up, it's the fingers are reaching and Adam is asking for help. He's reaching out and their fingers are not touching because the divine is the divine and human is human. But in the, in the reaching out, Adam is generating the God energy. And it's just such a beautiful depiction of what you said, that it's really a, a sign of high understanding and humility, which is not being humbled. It's being like asking for help is a beautiful thing because we, we all need help. We're all sisters and brothers. We all have the same access to this higher consciousness but we can leapfrog and help each other. Sometimes it's just a book that you read or a movie that, or a song or, or just another person's smile. But we all 
are connected in this beautiful blended family of humankind. And it's through our humanness that we're going to achieve that sense of satisfaction. And also the other thing I was thinking of is what a, a commitment it is to maintain perseverance and to know that the transformation of human consciousness is not going to just be a pill you take or a shrink visit or even a series that you do uh, with a course, for instance, like I'm developing a course now. I'd like to think they all help, but what it is is a journey. So yes, some of us have setbacks and some of us just go uh, leapfrogging ahead, but we're helping others if we're truly evolved people. We don't just say, I got it, I got it all. No, it's to share. And so I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful, time in human evolution myself and where it's very accelerated you know because of the the modern technology and people's level of understanding and also the blending of the races and the cultures we're not just saying oh no this is my country you can't come in or over there you got to stay there because we got here first we, we all have to learn to really blend together and more and more the oneness consciousness is happening whether we like it or not it's going to happen <laughs> well and i i think about interracial marriages because you know there's a lot of movies that are showing up about interracial marriages and stuff and i actually watched the movie victoria and abdul last night and i had no idea that england was so upset about the eastern indian with the queen you know i mean it was like a violent kind of thing it was unbelievable mm -hmm. and what they tr what and how they tried to intimidate her but then i look at because i remember in school when they talked about that every race every culture has like their own specific illnesses and the more we enter marry mm -hmm. we start dissipating that where we become where we get rid of you know, like sickle cell for the African American race, that kind of thing. So you start intermarrying, sickle cell starts leaving the planet. So as we blend, I mean, this is a beautiful way. I'm just thinking what you when you yeah. said this. Right. That as we inter interreact, intermarry, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we're getting rid of disease because sickle cell can't live with a white person. It just can't or an Asian, you know, and I know every culture has one and I used to know what most of them were, but I don't anymore, yeah. but we're, but that's a part of an evolution on our beings, you know, it's allowing us to experience other cultures and understanding that and merging to where we do become that one person, we become more tolerant. And, you know, when you think about what we went through in the fifties with these people that were intermarried and how they were shunned and mistreated and bullied and threatened and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still have that today. Don't get me wrong. It's still there, but it's mm -hmm. not as bad. It's more tolerant. And now Hollywood is doing a lot of that as well. Oh yeah. You're almost on the outs if you're not a black or African or um, you know, a, a darker person in the art world right now, for instance, it's, and it's about time as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I'm an artist and like if I went to a gallery today, they would say, no, you're white. I'm sorry. Come back another century. You've had your time. We're, we're sick and tired of like the white guy and the white gals interpretation. We want to see the different because it, they, you know the blending is so beautiful because we are becoming a stronger like my book says hybrid vigor we're becoming more human because instead of just saying no it has to be this certain way and like the disease uh thing the the, the fact that we either um, evolve or it dissipates that happens in so many things a very good friend of ours is a hundred years old this week and she's an wow. african-american and she is uh, she's been the only live guest that we've had on our podcast, Z Lord podcast. And when she, she's, she's into mental health and she was born in Harlem and she's seen the whole thing all the way from the Harlem Renaissance to the George Floyd, uh, you know, change and the revolution that's happened and the, and, and, and how everything is so different now. And 
it's just incredible. When she was a young lady studying for her degree in psychology, she was actually told by her professors that there is no way that Black people can ever have mental health help because they can't change. She was told this by her white oh. professors at Hofstra University. And it's just appalling to me what a lot of us have had to go through in order to be the free and transforming people that we are. And we, we just had lunch with a very good gay friend who is now like in his 70s. And when he was a young man, he was forced to have mental health like treatment, which basically pushed him into schizophrenia. I mean, he was condemned for being gay. And this is a common story. Many gay people committed suicide before our society started embracing people of a different color than the what fit, fit into the category of he or she. I, I My pronouns, by the way, are he, she, and it. I am everything. <laughs> I am a shit. <laughs> Why should I deny one part of myself just because, you know, this is what you see? So um, uh, there, I lost my light again. So um, it's very much a, a fight that we are in. We're in a battle between what is our privilege as humans to evolve, not socially battle, like going out and, you know, joining an army or anything, but it's a, it's a spirit battle. And we all have to be vigilant. And each one of us needs to really realize that it takes a lot of work to maintain yeah. that state of happiness. I mean, it's easy to be pissed off. It's easy oh, yeah. to well, you're wrong. And that's easy. That is so easy. It's like lazy. It's like lazy thinking. Come on, people. You know, let's have a little exercise with our compassion. <laughs> I, get, I hear you. So what would be one piece of advice that you would give our audience to help them move into a different direction to achieve their dreams or become a better person? Well, to make a commitment to say to yourself, I really want that. Like if you look in the mirror and you say, oh, I don't like these, you know, saddlebags. I think, oh, okay, I'm going to make a commitment to lay off the cookies. You have to, you can, don't just do it for an hour. You have to lay off those cookies and the saddlebags dissolve. So if I, if I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and afraid and even like upset because of the divisiveness and that we feel that is permeating everything, which I do not believe. I think it's a con job by the media. But if we really want to be participants in the solution instead of the problem, then it starts with our own self. We can look within our own self and say, how open is my heart? How open is my mind? And if, and if we can honestly say, well, I do have some prejudices or I do have some judgment, then that's a great place to start. And then to be vigilant and say, well, there I go again, you know, and, and maybe instead of scowling and being upset about the way life is, you can decide I'm going to change my mind. Like my spiritual teacher who always remains nameless said, it's very simple. You make a decision and you change your mind. Now, some people, they think they need drugs. They think they need plant medicines. They think they need to go to Peru and take ayahuasca or LSD or whatever. But I am a firm believer of, of meditation. And anybody who wants to can just learn in two simple breaths so many ways. I mean, I have meditation uh, uh, YouTube videos up. Millions of people do these days. Many people are involved in this movement of transforming the human race from a fear-based uh, species into a love-based, like infinitely more desirable animal. <laughs> yeah, that that's very true. I mean, when I decided I would I wanted to be a better person. My whole world changed and I stuck to that because there was something deep inside of me that has said it's time. I've been so-called playing, you know, where mm -hmm. it was safe. And then there's a point that you just say, just dive in, you know, just commit to you. 
And that was the, that was a game changer. So I really commend you on saying that because I think that's, that's very true that people need to do that and then stick to it. And there are so many people out there that can help them. It's, if it's not me, if it's not you, there's somebody else out there that you can resonate with to have them as your teacher, your guide, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and the next best thing to do, this is really, really important, Kathleen, and I'm sure you would agree, it's so important about the company we keep. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just have to say adios to friends that just insist on bringing you down. Or in my case, I've had to say goodbye to very old friends who really just want to rain on my parade. They really, have, that's happened to me several times in my adult life, that uh, I'm not just playing around. I really do want to help the world be a better place by me becoming a better person. So I've had to distance myself. And in one case, the friend came back to me after 30 years and she said, what happened? And I explained to her that, you know, we went our way and she said, wow, I was a jerk. How did that happen? <laughs> We're good friends now. And sometimes you just need to take a little space. And in the case of like a child or a spouse that you can't just leave, another trick is to fill your mind with a, a pleasant affirmation or a, a, a mantra that uplifts you while you're listening to something that could really bring you down like somebody criticizing you, for instance, for this change that you want so desperately, because you know it's real. It's not just something that you have to die and go to heaven for. Life can be heaven right now. Yeah. So how can people get a hold of you? Well, my mothership is tezalord.com. Everything is there. My books, my uh, YouTube connection, my podcast, tezalord.com is a good place to start. I'm on social media too. All right. Well, thank you so much, Teza, for joining me today. I really do appreciate your time. I know that, you know, sometimes Mercury retrogrades has ways of doing things, but yet you made it. You took off a little bit of your camping trip and you came to the show and I do appreciate the wisdom that you brought and the gentleness of your spirit. It's that it's really embodied in you and I can really sense that and feel that. So thank you so much for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Kathleen. I so much appreciate it and, and spread love however you can, you and everybody who's listening. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, I want to thank everyone who joined us today on the journey of an awakening spirit. If you got some value out of this, I would really appreciate it if you like or subscribe to the channel or even send a link to a friend or a loved one who you think might need some additional help or support because we are here. I do have on the podcast.kathleenmflanagan.com. I do have a list of all the speakers I've had on the show with me. So if there's somebody there to resonate, I highly encourage you to reach out to them. And if you're struggling with anything that we talked about or would like to have more information on how I can support you uh, becoming your authentic self, please reach out to me at Brave TV at KathleenMFlanagan.com. My books, The Dark Night of the Soul, The Call, The Dark Night of the Soul, and Awakened are available on Amazon and KathleenMFlanagan.com. Be sure to visit the Kathleen M. Flanagan site for a list of services and products that are being offered there. And you can also access a three minute de-stress meditation that is completely free to you. There's no email required. And then don't forget to visit Awakening Spirit and Grandma's Natural Remedies to take advantage of the Brave TV coupon codes respectively for each site. And that concludes our show for today. And I want to thank all of you again for joining me. And I will see you all next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.